Hello, welcome back to another Swans cast match preview. And this week, Swansea head up to Leicester, in which is going to be a very tricky game uh, against top of the league, high-flying Leicester City, as we found out when they came down earlier on the season. And Jack from the Final Whistle is here to discuss all things Leicester with me today. So welcome to the channel, Jack. No, I appreciate it, Luke. How are you, my friend? Yeah, doing good. I mean, doing a lot better here than I am when I'm watching the Swans at the moment. But obviously, we'll get into that. And I'm sure it's the complete opposite for you up at Leicester City. Yeah, we're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably not the last two games. We've only picked at one point in six in the maximum points. But yeah, we're doing all right. Um, top of the league, eight points clear from second. Um, or shall I say, um, seven, seven points from second. So yeah, doing all right. Yeah, definitely doing all right. And you're saying about the, the recent form there, obviously the defeat against Coventry, who I would say are in form themselves and the draw against Ipswich. It's, it's still two tough games, I guess, to drop points to rather than maybe teams lower down. You'd expect those to be the tricky games. So, yeah, still a bit concerning from a Swans fan perspective heading up to to the, your ground. Yeah, the Coventry game are always uh, one of them games. Obviously, the M69 Derby, Derby Day, you know, fragging rights and all that. You obviously yeah. want to perform at the highest level. And uh, yeah, I think the red card for us changed the game, to be fair to us. Um, we obviously took the league through Dewsbury Hall and then Fatu ended up getting sent off minutes later, which didn't help the situation. And then second half, you know, we had to... Stay in the game as much as we could and uh, see if we could see the game out. Uh, but no, nah, Coventry ended up beating us um, in that second half, three goals to one. Uh, the Ipswich game, I mean, fantastic first half um, in the 1 1 draw. But yeah, second half, we let Ipswich come on, come on us, innit? And, uh, you know, they caused us problems and then. We switched off at the vital moment in the 89th minute and then Ipswich ended up scoring to get a point late on. And, uh, yeah, very disheartening, to be fair. But, yeah, one point in a maximum of six for us. But, yeah, hopefully on Tuesday night we can get back to winning ways. And you mentioned that you're top of the league. So, I think I asked, um, would have would have spoken about this earlier in the season when we spoke, obviously, on your channel. But how has the season been for you? Uh, considering you got relegated from the Premier League, like we were expecting to be so high flying, we were expecting to be seven points clear at the stage of the season, or you know, uh, is that what you expected, or are you much better than a position that you thought you would be in, especially with the new manager as well coming into this season? Yeah, I think we're a new manager, you know, it's a new philosophy, isn't it? A lot of changes happen. Um, I had us down as winning the league at the from the from the get go. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been an incredible, well winded start for the Foxes. Twenty one wins um, out of twenty eight, which is incredible. Um, you know, we've broken records as well this season. So yeah, it's been a a very good season from a Foxes fan perspective. Obviously, the targeting going back to the Premier League is is on as well. So yeah, we're doing good at the minute. Um, a few games where we've dropped points in games where we could have got wins out of but yeah I'm happy I'm happy where we are at the minute um, so being a bit greedy now <laughs> nice I think I think as a Leicester fan this season look I've just took it game by game obviously people no, that's fair enough got to um, win them all yeah people say you know you you're going to walk the league or something like that obviously them sort of things come and then they start calling you parachute FC and this that and the other because you've come down and you obviously get the parachute payment and that but now I think we've we've just took it um, step by step really and, uh, we've got our heads down we've won games and uh, obviously you're going to expect to lose games aren't you in this league this league's tough uh, we've We've had teams who have really gave us a game this season and uh, we've managed to grind things out. And I think that's down to the real mentality of the squad. Um, but yeah, you've got to go into every game thinking you can win it, haven't you, um, as a football fan? Yeah, and what about the new manager then? Um, maybe not the most expected appointment before he came. And how's that worked out? Has he kind of surprised you at all? And with the way that he's been playing football, obviously, I know he came in from. Uh, Man City, so... Um, 
Not really, to be fair. I mean, he brings a great philosophy, doesn't he? That real learning from one of the best managers in the world in Pep Guardiola. Um, obviously, he helped Man City with Pep to win the treble last season. So, yeah, he's, he's got a real aura about him, isn't he? That, that real passion about him, that desire to win at all costs. And, uh, yeah, he's been great, Maresca. Um, and I don't think we could ask any more from him, to be honest. Yeah, no, I think I think it's clear to see that he's done a really good job, and he's obviously lived from the best. Um, I just hope that he has an off day when Swansea make the trip up tomorrow <laughs> evening or tonight, if you're watching this in the morning. Um, okay, so we're near the end of the January transfer window, and it's kind of I don't normally ask this question because the time of year kind of makes sense. Leicester have got a really strong squad already, mm-hmm. and I know you've got it. You've mentioned there's a few injuries, like indeed he is out at the moment, and. You have in some players linked with big moves, Drewsbury Hall, you mentioned to me is 40 million plus move target for a couple of Premier League teams. Do you expect any ins and outs going into the final days of the transfer window? Um, I'm not really sure, to be fair. I mean, we're looking on bringing uh, Stefano Sensi in from um, Inter Milan. That looks like a permanent deal. Um, according to Fabrizio Romano, that they was on about a loan before, but I think now he's tweeted it uh, several times now, but today he's tweeted about a permanent deal again. So um, it's been swinging all sorts of roundabouts, that one, that Stefano Sensi deal. Yeah. Obviously, the Dewsbury Hall one, um, Leicester reported to want 40 million plus add ons for Kane and Dewsbury Hall. Obviously, Brighton tested the waters, I believe, with a package of 20 million pounds uh, to start off with. Um, but yeah, to bring Leicester to the table, they're obviously going to want what they want, aren't they, before they start talking to teams. Uh, Brentford, obviously interested as well. But Dewsbury Hall, like I said a few weeks back, he said that uh, he wants to be that leader to lead Leicester back to the Premier League. And I believe yeah. in what he says. Um, but yeah, he's a fantastic player. He's been uh, one of our standout players this season. Um yeah, and I, I don't see him moving this January window, to be honest. I, we don't have to get rid of our best players, to be honest. We don't have to. We don't have to sell. But with us wanting to bring in players, we have to sell players. Do you get what I mean? And Enzo has been talking about it quite a lot. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting next few days, to be fair, to see what happens at the football club. Obviously, we have had loans leave the club like uh, Luke Thomas to Middlesbrough and uh, Daniel Iverson to Stoke City. So... Yes, I think we've had loans leave the club, but we haven't signed anybody as of yet as we speak. Yeah, it's, it sounds a little bit more exciting than ours so far. We made a signing today, but being a bit quiet at Swansea in the transfer window, we definitely mm. don't look like selling a player for £40 million. Pound. I think if that was on the cards, they'd be probably driven up uh, to wherever they're going down here with the money. Probably very, very required to reinvest in our squad. Um Okay, going more into your team then, I understand you're playing, playing like a 4-2-3-1. Would you expect that to continue? And if so, what key players would be included to expect against Swansea? I think um, I think Hermanson will start in goal for us. Um, Vestergaard, Fast, Ricardo, James Justin with a back four. Um, Harry Winks will play that one, one behind the four. So it's more like a a 4-1-4-1, but then Ricardo goes from right back into the other position to help um, yeah. Harry Winks to go into a two. So, yeah, um, it looks like a 3 2 4 one if, as the game goes on. You get what I mean? Uh, I think McAteer will start right wing with Steffi Mavadidi. Obviously, we won't have Wilfred Ndidi, who's injured, which is a shame, to be fair. Um, Jewsbury Hall, I, I'd expect him to start. Um, to be honest, um, Yunus Atgun, I think he'll start as well. Um, he'll be that other man to fill in, obviously, with Cassidy going back to Chelsea a few weeks. But, you know, um, so, yeah, Leicester's really short in midfield, to be fair, Luke, in options in midfield. Uh, we could play Dennis Pratt there, who knows. But um, striking option, I mean, we've got Pats and Dacker back from the AFCON, so... I think he'll start with Tom Cannon. I think uh, Jamie Vardy and Pat Sendaka, they'll come on throughout the game itself. So, yeah, I think Tom Cannon will start up front for Leicester. Uh, has, he, has he been one of your key players this season then for your goal scoring and Tom Cannon? I know Drewsbury Hall, but in terms of your striking options with Vardy and Dacker in the wings, has Cannon been your main man? 
Yeah, I think Tom Cannon's settled in quite well, to be honest. Um, obviously, he was injured at the start, so now it's tight. Kind of like took him time to gel into the squad and get going. Obviously, you can see how much potential he's got with the way he plays and uh, runs off the shoulder of defenders at times with uh, the way he runs the lines and that. He can score goals. He looks clinical up front when given the chances. Um, Pat Sandaki, you know, he, he waited his turn after not playing for a, quite a while. So he obviously scored a few this season as well, which is good. So it makes the strikers hungry, doesn't it, for that striking position. And obviously Jamie Vardy's been in amongst the goals, as you'd expect, um, being obviously up front um, quite a few games this season. You'd expect him to score with the goals and... Uh, I guess they learn off Vardy, isn't it? The likes of Daka, Tom Cannon and that, that experience that Jamie Vardy feeds from um, to help the younger players and that, which is good. So, yeah, I think with Tom Cannon, you know, Jamie Vardy's going to help him settle in quite quickly, isn't he? So, yeah, he's, he's one of the best to learn from. So, you form this season. You win in three mm -hmm. out of four games. <laughs> Obviously, mm -hmm. 21 wins, three draws and four defeats on 66 points. Scoring 56 along the way which I want to say is the highest in the league. And you've also conceded the least amount of goals in the league at 22. Not very pleasant reading for any away team that's uh, coming up to your ground. But if you look at Swansea's team, do you have any players that you think could do some damage uh, if Swansea had to find some success? Um, Matty Grimes, you know, he, he caused us problems in that first half when we played you in the 3-1 win, um, which he obviously scored as well. I think he'll be one of them. I think Patino, another one who's a very good good player as well on his day. Yeah. Um, he'll be... I think they're the two you sort of look at, Luke, to be, um, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, I think them two will be the key players for, obviously, you guys. Obviously, Jerry H, you know... I think he's like he's lacked some confidence, hasn't he, with this yeah. season? As he has scored, but he's not been your Joel Perot, has he? In that sort I of mean, striker, seven goals so far this season. He is a top goal scorer. Mm. Joel Perot was getting twenty a season. <clears throat> There's no reason if yeah. Jerry Yates found some confidence and form. You know, he's only thirteen games off, just over the halfway point of the season. So it's not unachievable, but I don't really yeah. think you'd find many Swans fans that would put money on that. Um, but he's also been linked to the move away, so we'll see what happens in the next couple of days, whether mm. that's just speculation or any merit to it. Um, but that'll be interesting to watch, definitely. But Grimes ever present, obviously captain, and yeah, he did, he did get a goal uh, in the in the previous. Um, Patino hasn't been starting, or you know, is numerous calls amongst the fans for him to start. So maybe he will get on the pitch in this game. You get on probably anyway in the later stages if it's not from the start, but. He is a player that's got quality that can unlock a defence or do a bit of damage himself if given the opportunity. So um, we'll see. Um, not so confident myself. But what are you feeling about the game in terms of prediction? It's a tough game. Um, do I see Swansea coming out and giving it a go? Yes. Um, I think they'll frustrate a Swansea. You know what I mean? They'll try and make it as hard of a game as possible for... Leicester, um, obviously, uh, we've seen some teams come and park the bus like Rotherham and that this season. I, d I don't see that being the case with Swansea, to be honest. Yeah. Um, like you say, you play, is it where five sort of, five at the back, sort of? So, I see yeah, you pushing more forward three. and uh, trying to cause a threat down the left and right. So, um, yeah, you know, we can't afford to be complacent in this game, obviously, being... Eight points clear of third place Southampton. You know, we've got to be clinical in this game, I think. You know, when yeah. we go one and up, we've got to be able to go and kill the game off and get more goals and uh, see the game out, uh, to be honest, um, which we obviously didn't do against Ipswich. So, yeah, I think it'll be a good game between the two sides. Um, I think Leicester, though, will come out on top on this game and... Um, you know, we've obviously got the causes of threat with Mavadidi and that. So, yeah, I think we will see the game um, through. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a good game between the two sides. So, I'm going to... I think let's still keep a clean sheet, to be fair. Um, home form's quite good. So, I'm going to go 3-0 to Leicester. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me. I said 2-1 on your, on your channel. Mm. 
I think I'm being optimistic and I'm quite open to say that, but only always saying, I'm always saying that because I think they need to show some form of mm. uh, performance after getting smashed against Bournemouth. And even though I think we'll still lose the game, losing 2-1 mm-hmm. away to Leicester is not necessarily an awful takeaway uh, from you know Leicester who have been high-flying and from the position that we are in. Obviously, everyone would love to get a point or a win, but let's be realistic, and I think it'd be a tough match. So, um, three nil. I hope not. Maybe we can get a goal and build on something. But we, you know, we'll see. It'll be a tough match, nonetheless. Um, thanks for having. Well, thanks for coming on the channel. Uh, one question to end on before I do finish. I like to ask everyone, not so football related, but what is the best football scran you've ever had when you've been to any stadium? What's your favourite one you've ever had? Oh. Um... Tricky question. It is. Um, I'll tell you what, the, we had this um, 16 hour beef brisket um, sort of in a bread roll, which was quite nice at Blackburn Rovers. Um, I think I gave it like a nine point, yeah, nine point something. So it was that nice. good. A, a, a bit expensive. I think I paid 12 quid for it. But it were lovely, it were lush. Um, that's probably one of the best I've had this season in the championship. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that. Blackburn Rovers is a uh, beef brisket um, in a roll. Speaking of Blackburn, they're currently playing Rex. I'm going to check the score if anyone's interested in 4 1 currently. Bit sad, I thought Rex might have had a chance there after going 1 0 up, but. Um... I think the championship quality is there to end mm. Wrexham's run in the in the FA Cup here. But yeah, thank you very much for jumping on the channel. Good luck for the weekend and the rest of your season, of course. Um, yep. Hopefully you're having an off day and you can kind of give us a bit of uh, <laughs> charity this, this week. But I'm sure it looks like the Premier League beckons a uh, return for yourselves. And if, if that is the case, good luck. And uh, maybe we'll catch you in the Cup next year or otherwise whenever we meet again. <laughs> Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, go check us out at the final whistle if you haven't uh, subscribed to us and that. We do all Leicester-based content. We do championship predictions if you're a Swansea fan and you want to get involved in championship predictions, please do go and do so. But no, thanks for having us on on the Swans cast. I appreciate it. Um, all the best to Swansea after the Tuesday night game against Leicester for the rest of the season. No, brilliant. And thank you for coming. Um, I don't know if I maybe you forgot to tell you to plug but yeah go check out the final whistle and i'll have all the links in the description anyway so um if you are interested in getting involved in the predictions go click on the link go check out the channel and get involved and yeah hopefully we'll see you again soon appreciate it see you later and thanks everyone for watching uh we shall catch you in the next one and hopefully we can get a positive result here but yeah we'll we'll see thank you